The year to their podcast, it's time to start the show. Be sure to hold on tight, here we go. Exploring all the different Disney destinations. Ear to there, it's time to start the fun. Hello everybody and welcome to the Ear to Their podcast, Walt Disney World, Word of the Week. I am your host, Phil Gramlick, and each and every week, I will come to you with a different Walt Disney World word, and then give you some tips, tricks, hints, history, background, history, background, they're kind of the same thing, but all kinds of stuff about that Walt Disney World word. All right, well, let's get right into it. This week's Walt Disney World word of the week, <laughs> I forgot the name of the show for a second there, but it's brought to you by the letter I, I for Italy. Yep, this week I want to talk all about the Italy Pavilion in Epcot's World Showcase. So the Italy Pavilion opened with the rest of World Showcase on October 1st, 1982. Now one thing you're going to have to realize about (laughs) me talking about the Italy Pavilion is my Italian accent or my pronunciation of some of these Italian words might just be worse than my pronunciation of the Spanish language. It's going to be pretty bad, but I'll do my best (laughs) to make it make sense. Okay. So the architecture in the Italy Pavilion is supposed to represent three different locations in the country of Italy. So there are three very different styles of architecture in the pavilion, right? There's Venetian architecture, there's Florentine architecture, and there is Roman architecture. Represented in the pavilion are very famous Italian landmarks like St. Mark's Square, the Doge's Palace, and the Bell Tower of St. Mark. See now, because I said Doge, I try to do my best. There's my best accent, right? Right there. Doge's Palace. For some reason, I'm thinking, fear does not exist in his dojo, does it? No, sensei from Karate Kid, because I'm thinking Doge sounds like dojo. That's horrible. Okay, let me keep going. The last thing, honestly, I want to do is to insult anybody from Italy or any Italian Americans who are listening to this episode. So I apologize. It just reminded me of Karate Kid. One other very famous part of Venice that is included in the pavilion are the gondolas. So if you walk over toward the World Showcase Lagoon and take a walk out onto those bridges, you can get an up close and personal look at these gondolas that are actual replicas of the gondolas that you would see in the canals in Venice. Another very famous Italian landmark that is kind of paid tribute to in this pavilion as well is the Sistine Chapel. Now, there's not an actual big replica of the Sistine Chapel in the pavilion, but take a look at the facade of the Il Bel Cristallo shop. Yes, I'm, again, horrible Italian pronunciation, but... That's located at the front of the Italy Pavilion, and that is a representation of the exterior of the Sistine Chapel. And if you take a walk back to the rear of the pavilion, you'll find the Neptune Fountain, which is, (laughs) now I can't remember the name, which is reminiscent of Rome's Trevi Fountain. So what is there to do in the Italy Pavilion? Well, I am so glad you asked, (laughs) because I'd love to tell you. So at select times during the day, there's an Italian juggler and comedian named Sergio who does a really cool show there in the Italy Pavilion. So you should try to check him out if you can. Look at the times guide. You'll be able to see when he is performing. And there are also Italian flag throwers. Now, I'm not even going (laughs) to, I'm not even going to try to pronounce their name or where they're from in Italy because I would not, I would just butcher it. But if you stick around after Sergio's show, they usually perform after him. It's a very unique, very cool, you probably haven't seen anything like it before kind of show. So that is pretty entertaining. Stick around, check them out in the Times Guide as well. You can see when they're going to perform. That's a very unique kind of show that you won't see at home, I'm sure. Okay, so on to what you're all waiting for. (laughs) That is, what is there to eat in the Italy Pavilion? That's something that's very important. And there are actually... Well, I was going to say three, but there are actually four different locations to eat in Italy. The first one I want to talk about is the Tutto Gusto Wine Cellar. Now, I'm not a wine drinker per se. I like wine, especially red wine, but it gets me a little eh, it gets me a little dizzy, a little lightheaded. So I don't really drink it. I stick to the craft beer. If 
If you see me in Walt Disney World and I'm in the Italy Pavilion, I will probably be having one of the craft beer flights over at, well, one of the other restaurants that we will talk about in a minute. But if you are a fan of a nice glass of wine or a wine flight, check out Tuto Gusto Wine Cellar. It's very, very cool. They have small plates. They also have paninis. They have desserts. And of course, they have wine. So that's a great place to go if you are a wine fan. Now, if you're craving a big, old-fashioned, traditional Italian, real Italian meal, you are going to want to head over to the Tutto Italia Ristorante. Now, yes, I said that with my wonderful (laughs) Philadelphia accent, so I apologize, but head over to that restaurant if you're feeling really hungry and you want a full Italian dinner experience. If you want to try the meatballs, the ziti, the lasagna, the spaghetti, any of that, those those traditional things that you might kind of associate with Italy, that's the place for you to go. If you want to take the kids, if you're worried that there won't be a, a an actual Disney kind of style kids menu at this restaurant, they actually do have a the pretty normal kids menu over there with spaghetti, mozzarella sticks, pizza, chicken tenders. So even if your kids aren't big Italian food eaters, they will more than likely have something that they will enjoy at Tutto Italia. Now, if you're a big dessert or a big ice cream fan, you absolutely have to stop by the gelati stand, the kiosk in the Italy Pavilion. Now, the main draw at this stand is the gelato, which is like a creamier, denser version of ice cream. There are all different flavors like strawberry cookies and cream or coffee. You can get the gelato sandwich, which is the any flavor gelato that you want that is stuffed between two chocolate chip cookies. That is awesome. My kids get that <laughs> pretty much every time we walk past that stand in Epcot. They also have different kinds of desserts like tiramisu, cannoli. They have a cannoli cupcake there. Then they have the drinks like an Italian margarita, all different kinds of wines. So yeah, this is a nice little stop for you along the world showcase. Now, the last spot where you can get food kind of has its own little backstory, right? And it is Via Napoli, and that was put in in 2010. It's personally my favorite place to get food in the Italy Pavilion, mostly because they have all different kinds of gourmet pizzas, and they have the craft beer, the Italian craft beer flight, which I kind of mentioned earlier, and that's one of my favorite things to get. They also have a really, really good sangria that they serve there as well. The food is all kinds of pizza, all kinds of Italian specialties that are cooked in these huge open ovens. And these open wood-burning ovens actually are named after the three active volcanoes in Italy that are Etna, Vesuvio, and Stromboli. And those ovens are there to make what I think is the best pizza, not only in Walt Disney World, but in all of Central Florida. And I've actually said that on this podcast a bunch of times. I really believe that that's the best pizza. Via Napoli has the best pizza in all of Central Florida, maybe in all of Florida. Now, you might have heard the rumors that that's because they fly in the ingredients from Naples. And you would be right, kind of to a point. The flour that they use for the pizza, that is actually flown in from Naples. That's true. But the water is not from Naples. The water is actually flown in from a natural spring in Pennsylvania. Yes, my home state. Because there's something about the mineral content that mimics or is very close to the water in Naples itself. That's true. So the next time you are in Viennapoli, you can impress your friends and your family with that little nugget. And my favorite part, my favorite little part of history about the Italy Pavilion is... What was there before the Annapoli? And the answer is a wall with nothing behind it. (laughs) That's true. The original plans for Epcot called for two attractions to be built in the back of the Italy Pavilion. One of those attractions was a gondola kind of ride through dark ride. And the other one was a walkthrough attraction that you would go through Roman ruins. But they were supposed to take place during Epcot's Phase 2 expansion. And as we all know, or as you might know from listening to this podcast every week, the Phase 2 expansion of Epcot never happened. So that wall sat there from 1982 to 2010 when Via Napoli was actually built and the rest of the 
Italy Pavilion was completed. And that is going to do it for this week's Walt Disney World Word of the Week. As always, thank you so, so much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did enjoy it, all I ask is that you tell someone about it. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your sister, tell your brother, tell your dog, tell your cat, (laughs) anyone else you'd like to share this episode with. It is always greatly appreciated by me. So thank you again so much for listening. And just remember, there will be a new episode of the Word of the Week each and every Wednesday morning, as well as a new episode of the regular Ear to Their podcast. And that'll be each and every Monday morning. So thank you again for listening. Until next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.